can go to Rick Stroud. Hey, Clyde. Um, if you could, just from your vantage point as, as, as uh, Tom's coach, just where is he in terms of, of, of being sort of assimilated to this offense? I mean, how – what are the things that still – Still, he, he isn't real sure of, given, given the limited time he's been able to play. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's clearly still a work in progress. I, I've, I've said before that, you know, at times it looks like, you know, he's a guy running somebody else's offense. Each week, each day, you know, it gets closer to him running his offense, our offense, you know, all of our offense. And, uh, you know, it's going to take a little time. It's going to take a little time. It was a, you know – whatever the opposite of a perfect storm is, you know, that just not to have those reps in the off season, not to have March, April to work through some of these kinks and get to know each other, you know, that, uh, you know, you wish that if this was a second preseason game and you're working through those things, but it's not, we're in the season and uh, we just got accelerated and it's happening. It's, you know, but it's happening slowly and it's not, it's not, it's not a done process yet. It's not, it's certainly not done yet. Is, is there is there any one area more than others? Is it is it getting in sync with his receivers? Is it checks at the line of scrimmage? Is there anything that you know? Yeah, that, I think that's... I think it's just comfort. You know, a, a lot of time, things. You know, it's not it's not being comfortable with his receivers. He's done a great job with that. The receivers have done a great job. They logged a bunch of hours this off yeah. season, and they, and they really didn't miss their time. I think what it is is just adjustments. What do I do when this? What what about when they don't do it quite like what we practiced? Uh, you know, it's been impossible to get him every scenario, every situation, every every look that he could possibly get. And then all of a sudden someone does something that, you know, is unpracticed. You didn't get a look at it. And uh, just where's his answers? His answers have been one place for 20 years, and now maybe they're somewhere else. And uh, so I think it's just getting comfortable with all the adjustments. See, the base thing, if you sat in three deep zone and you – cooperated and you didn't disguise and everyone went where they were supposed to go, then, then, then we'd be fine. But it, it, it doesn't work that way. And uh, so it, it's just going to take some time on just, just, just the, the fine points of this thing. The hots, where's your hot? Where's, where's your check down going to be? Where's, you know, all those different things. Thanks. Okay. Next is Greg Allman. Hey, Clyde, looking back at, at Sunday's game with Carolina there, obviously uh, an offense changes when you have a big lead like you guys had at the half. But what were the differences you saw between uh, Brady throwing for 197 or whatever it was in the first half uh, and, and then struggling to, to move the ball with consistency in the second half? Yeah, I think, you know, the number one thing I see is that all of a sudden we, we turn it over with the, you know, we get the great turnover, the defense gets the turnover, we got a chance to put them away, we turn it over, so right there we give up a possession, then they start moving the ball, so time of possession goes down, now you, you know, you, you tighten up a little bit, protecting the lead, and, and, and uh, you know, I think it was more just kind of self-inflicted, and it started with that interception we threw you know, on the first drive of the third quarter that, that all of a sudden now that you get the ball back in the third quarter is almost over. So um, I, I think it was, it was a number of snaps. It was, you know, kind of the situation and then, then making sure that we, you know, were careful with that lead that we had a couple score lead and, and, uh, and making sure that we were uh, clean with it, you know, careful with it. Clyde, would to, to very basically not know until the very end of the – right before the first game, would you have Mike Evans or not, and then to have no Chris Godwin this past week. Is it fair to say that this this coming Sunday with both of them close to full strength will be a much fairer indication of, of this offense and what it can do? Sure, I hope so. I, I think, you know, I, I think I get the privilege of, of seeing there's, – there's just stretches of practice where you go, this is really, really going to be good, you know, and – and uh, and – I believe that with all my heart, it's, I don't know that it's this Sunday. I don't know that it's, you know, this month, you know, it, like it, it's just when it clicks, it's going to click and, it, and it's probably going to be a gradual process. I would see us as a unit that's going to continue to improve all year long and hopefully play, hopefully stay healthy and play our best football in November and December. And uh, it, it just with familiarity that that that's the way this year is going to go. I don't, I don't think it is going to be one of those. I think we'll have some moments. We're going to have some moments where it just clicks and it looks, it looks pretty special because there's some pretty special ingredients, you know, players in involved in the thing. But as far as just really understanding what we're doing and, and being able to execute it for three hours on a Sunday afternoon against an NFL defense, you know, I think that that's going to continue to be a work in progress and, and, uh, 
we'll keep getting there. We do, we, we, the biggest thing we got, my job probably is just make sure we don't get frustrated. We just got to keep progressing and uh, keep heading the right direction on this thing and we'll get there. Thanks, Clyde. I do, I do think, you know, it, it will be fun having both those guys out there going 100 miles an hour and, and, and even just practice, you know, like last week, you know, Mike was at, in and out of practice that first week. Uh, Chris last week didn't practice, you know, like, you know, even, even practice because all of a sudden now then Friday you're switching, you know, hey, this guy's going to be, this guy's going to be your F, this guy's going to be in the slot, that, you know, we're going to adjust all these different things. And uh, I do think we've stressed that all year with, with, with the, the COVID thing that, that's what this year is going to be. There's going to be some different people in some different places. And, and the chances are you're going to get some curveballs in this, in this next 14 weeks. And uh, so it should be good practice. And we have to function with that. That's what this year is going to, that's what this year already is. You know, that's what this year already is. Thanks. Okay. Next is going to be Jenna Lane. Hey coach. Um, how much more can this offense really become Brady's? Uh, you consider that, that how much he used the tight end in New England, and, and then we've got Bruce saying, you know, we're not throwing the ball 50 times to tight ends in games. That's what our receivers are for. I mean, where, where do you kind of see that balance being struck to where, you know, Tom does feel like he has enough control over this offense where it does become his own? I think it's just going it, to – like I just mentioned, it's just going to merge together and, and – uh, and, we're going to move toward what he's comfortable with. He's going to move toward what this system is and, uh, and it's, it's going to meet somewhere and, and, you know, and that that's just going to happen. The tight end thing will take care of itself. And I think it's going to be one of those years where there's going to be year, days that they're going to do, take, try and take those two wideouts away. And those tight ends are going to have gigantic days. There's, you know, you got two elite wideouts outside and then Scotty's Scotty and water playing really, really well, you know, in their roles and, and fast guys. So, I do think, you know, we've always started with the White House, but there's, there's going to be some huge days for those tight ends, and, and especially as people have to take away, especially when we have both wide receivers on the field where you, you have to take those guys away and, and commit people to them, then there's going to be some great one-on-one -on -one matchups inside. I do think, you know, for Gronk just knocking the rust off, I mean, there, there's going to be same thing. I just see this thing as, you know, that the finished product's a ways away, and it's not – it's not your usual year. It's not guys who have been here and, you know, you get the whole off season and you get four preseason games and man, come opening day, you're humming. That's not, that's, that's not the case this year. So um, it's going to take some patience on everyone's part and, and, and we'll get there. We'll get there, but it's, it's, it's not easy stuff. You've described how Brady, when you were on the other side of, of things, when you were coaching in Indy, that he would look really angry on game day and, and you were kind of intimidated to go up to him and say hi to him because he always looks so mad. And now you're seeing that, that same intensity, but he's on your sideline. What's that whole dynamic and that experience been like for you? Yeah, no, I always tease him that, you know, we played him so many times and I'd stand on that sideline. He'd do his little lap when he's loosening up. And I always go, I think I'm going to say hello and just meet him this year, you know, which is kind of common. And, and I'd always look and he, he always looked so angry that I always never, never say anything. So I had never met him until he came here to Tampa, never met him at all. And uh, so I do, I do tease him about that, that, you know, ends up being, he's, he's an awful nice guy and, uh, and uh, wished I had. I'm glad I did get to meet him when I did get to meet him. But uh, I do, I do love to tease him about that. As far as his intensity, you know, you've seen it on the other side. It's, it's, it's. You know, it, it, the guy's an elite leader. The guy, the guy motivates people. He's into it, and uh, and he's been, he's been really, really good. And uh, it's what we need. It's, it's. He's, he's done a great job with it. And uh, you know, you watched it from the other side, and and you just knew that you know to beat him, you just. It, it, you, you were going to have to kill him, that, it, that he, he was going to will the thing into, into being. And that's what those great ones do, that their will is so strong that, you know, they're going to bring everyone along with them. And, uh, and, it's, and, and to beat them, to beat them, you're, you, you, you know, you really have to get after them. And, uh, you know, that they're, they're going to fight till the very end. And, that, and that's him. And he, 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 you know, he has the, a great vantage point that he's seen it done well. He's, he's played football at a high, high level. He knows what it looks like. And, and I think that's the call for all of us, that we, we, we have to play at a higher, more consistent level. And, uh, and, uh, and he has to lead the way. And he hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't played at that level yet either. So we have to play at that level at the quarterback position. And then we've stressed all along this year that, that the quarterback room has to lead this thing. And, uh, and we'll, we'll get, we got to get this thing playing at a high level if we're going to get where we want to get. Thanks so much, Coach. Yes, ma'am.
Uh, next is James Palmer. Hey, Coach, w was there a throw that, that sticks out in your mind? There were questions about Tom's arm. Was there one throw in camp or whatever that you just kind of went, yep, that's – that's it. Is anything stand out to you specifically that you knew the arm was was still there when you saw him up close? Yeah, there were about 150 of them in training camp that uh, that confirmed what we saw in film that he hadn't lost anything with his arm. But I think the one in the game, you know, the one he threw down the middle there, in the middle of too deep to Mike, you know, that thing was a frozen rope. And uh, you know, there were a couple of those in the training camp that where you just go, wow, you know, that, that's pretty special stuff. And I think that one in the game, you know, on a windy day, he drove that thing down and it cleared the Mike linebacker by about one inch and hit him in full stride. And uh, so I, I would, I would point to that one as, as, as one, you know, that, that was, uh, was a pretty good one, but uh, yeah, he, he's, he's made a bunch of them. And that, that's why I think, you know, it is fun that you, you have a privilege to, you know, I, we, we, we see it in practice at times for stretches, when this thing's hitting on all cylinders and it can be, it can be really good. You know, now we just got to, got to get it in a consistently hitting on all cylinders, which we haven't done yet. And to keep it consistent, a lot of that's what he sees out there uh, after a series. So what is it like when he comes to the sideline to talk to you guys? Is he already starting to spit things out to you before he reaches the sideline about what he's seeing, about what you guys want to do? What's the sideline interaction with you guys uh, within a game now that you've had two of them? Yeah, he does a good job. There's there's some times where he's extremely frustrated when we don't play what – do what we're supposed to do or when he's hardest on himself. He's probably harder on himself than – than he is on any of his teammates, you know, and he's mad that he missed the throw or didn't get in, in front of somebody on a check down or something. But, but uh, you know, he, he, he will get frustrated. But usually the usual process, he's going to sit down, he's going to look at those pictures, he's going to see what they're doing, what they did, and then his mind's just going to start ticking, hey, what do I got to do? What do we need to do? And, and, uh, and then he's on to the next one. So he's, he has a good process. He looks at those pictures, just confirms what he thinks he saw. He, he you know – in the heat of battle, he, you know, it's amazing how much he does remember and is aware of everything that went on out there, and he'll confirm it on the picture and then, then start working toward the next, toward the next series. Thanks, very, man. very good at that. Very, very good. And, and again, you know, you're, you're 20 years doing this for a living in that pocket that there's very few looks that he hasn't seen 50 times. So he, he's, you know, he's got so much experience that way that it, it, he can confirm that stuff pretty darn quick. Okay, next is going to be Steve Isbitz. Coach, you've been in game week meetings preparing with Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. Can you talk about how their game week approaches, you know, kind of compare and contrast? Yeah, they're very, very, very similar. They're uh, unbelievably thorough. It's a 24-7 job for them. You know, they're going to take their time for dinner. But, I mean, their mind is on that thing. And they, they start early in the week. They do a good job critiquing what they – what happened in the last week, and then they turn the page and they're on to the next one. But they're they're uh, extremely thorough. They they see it all as a big, big, big picture, and uh, it's it's always amazing to me what they see and what they pull out of a film, and and just how thoroughly they see it. I think they see it a lot of times more than a coach does, just because they're in the pocket. You know, they they that that's just one of those positions, and they're so elite at, at that position that. I think they just see things that maybe even coaches miss. And uh, so their preparation's impeccable. It's extensive. They work, you know, that there's going to be a phone call at 930 just confirming something most every night. And, uh, you know, it just, it goes from sun up till sundown and, and, uh, and then, you know, and even all the way till Saturday and Sunday morning, you know, that Saturday and Sunday are huge days for them just going back over it. When's this going to show up? Well, you know, am I ready? Is there anything I missed on this game plan? Hey, let's watch two more games of film and see if there's anything that I missed and just, just confirming and really getting, getting a good feel that, man, as soon as they do this, I'm doing this. When I see this, I'm doing that. And, uh, you know, it's kind of fun to watch. And then, then come, you know, about Saturday night, they're starting to get comfortable. They'll go watch their tape. They'll wake up. They'll review that call sheet, you know, and all the way – through pregame, I, I think the process continues. And then you, you sometimes can just look in their eye and say, he's got a beat on these guys, and that's a good, good feeling. So that, that I think as, as Tom gets more and more comfortable, that'll be more apparent that you just, man, I, I, got, a, I got a beat on these guys, and, and uh, then you know they're ready to go to work. And Josh Rosen, what's the development process like for him on a weekly basis? 
Yeah, we got to develop a better one. I, we haven't done him justice. Um, you know, he came in the middle. We got our hands full trying to get, you know, our, our, our starter prepared and uh, this team prepared. And uh, But what we'll do is we talk, We spoke yesterday, and we'll, get, we'll start using some of the off days to get some throw-in sessions. And, but for right now, it really it has not – I wouldn't even live, call it a process. We got to get a process to develop him and uh, slowly bring him along. But meeting-wise, we're bringing him along, just trying to learn what we're doing. We, we can't stop the train to make sure that he's taught – extremely well so he's going to have to he's going to catch up he works on his own a lot he's always got a ton of questions he asked Blaine and Griff a bunch of those questions and and so he's done a great job kind of preparing himself as a professional and uh, then we got to do a little I'll do a little bit of better job as the quarterback coach just just trying to find some time in the week where we can get him out there and get him a few you know just can't get him any reps we, there's no reps to be had and and uh, so it's just going to be we're going to have to use some of the off day and some of the some of the weekends, some of the times where you know where he's he is fresh and we can you know everyone else is kind of slowing down on the week and we, we we may have to stay out there on some Fridays and stuff and get some work done. Okay, that's all we have time for today. Thanks, Coach. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you.